here we are, the last foil booster kit from my Soulforge Fusions Kickstarter, the last winter booster display. Um, so this is also my last booster kit of the last winter that I'll have for a little bit. Um, I am getting one more booster display in the mail, so I'm excited to open that in the future as well. But for the near future, um, this is the last booster kit that I will have of the last winter. Again, this is an all full for foil booster kit, um, so I'm very excited for that. And by the way, hey, this is Nathus. So we'll see if we can get anything crazy out of this last display. I'm hoping for some cool betrayers, maybe some exalts, um, maybe something like a Hantu or something real strong. Um, something that'll make me really excited to play something in constructive. Maybe a couple more unspirited creatures, maybe something that's energizing. That's really, I think, the, the goal here. All right, so we got that Alloyan deck opened. Starting with an Alloyan Monolith, an Alloyan Sage, Arrogant Engineer, Combat Hacker, Electronet, Metamind Overseer, Shieldroid, Spare Force Sentinel, Silver Arc, Zapping Technician with Steel Rosetta with Optimize, Boost, and Augment. I feel like I have a full hacker team here with that engineer and the hacker here and the technician. Maybe we got a good IT team. That's if I were to fuse this deck, this would definitely be my IT deck. <laughs> but this is interesting. So I guess um, the part that is really exciting is that shield roid with that arrogant engineer. So if you give everything on your board additional shield, then you could give that arrogant engineer a ton of attack up to 15 at cycle three or at level three. So we've got the ability to upgrade with the Alloyan Monolith. Um, we've got the ability to make gizmos with both the Hacker and the Metamide Overseer, which then you could replace with the Spirit Force Sentinel. Alloyan Sage will upgrade cards if it's out on the board at the end of the cycle. Zapping Technician. Zapping is interesting because you're obviously just giving negative attacks, so you could potentially trade better in combat or just take less damage if you're keeping a lane unblocked. Then the Silver Arc is not bad for having that available for your Spirit Force Sentinel. So overall, this is not a bad list. Um, I think that you get some cool synergy here that we don't see in some of the other Loyan decks with that Shield Roid and the Engineer. And we've got two specific exalts for that exalted ability. So I like this one. Um, I think this is one I would definitely have on the chopping board, have on the availability board for my sealed deck if I were playing sealed here. So next, we've got we'll go Tempest. We'll save. Right, Terra and our Necron for last. Thank you, Gambit. Yes, we did. Starting with that Blizzard Shaman. Almost got that. Wait, didn't fully get it open yet. There we go. That should do it. Yes, it did. All right. So we'll start with a Blizzard Shaman, Charger Mammoth, Flame Break Invoker, Mount of Heroes, Rolling Hawk Rider, Stone Skin, Summoning Sharpback, Vigilant Sparker, Wind Reverse here, Stampeding Mongasaur, and. A Korok with Deep Burn, Stronghold, and Blast Wave. So this deck is interesting because we have that shard back to really take advantage of some of these other cards that deal damage to themselves. So we've got that Mount of Heroes, which could damage that shard back, deal extra damage and like across the board. We've got that Mongasaur, which is a great target for that shard back, so you could deal damage to the shard back, kill something, and do damage across the board. Um, we can. Basically, our only activate abilities in this part of the deck are the Charger Mammoth, not the Charger Mammoth, the Flame Break Invoker, and the Blizzard Shaman. Um, so it would basically have to really have a good um, pair to take advantage of that Wind Reverse here. But again, you could use it as like prevention of using an activate ability. So I think here with the Shard back, um, we definitely have a lot of interesting synergy here um, that I would be excited about. 
The Sparker, unfortunately, is Vigilant, but still, if I have to have a Vigilant creature, I'd like it to be something that has additional utility. And Rolling Hawk Rider, oh, never mind, that's not the one with Slay. That's Smash Fist. We've been seeing so much of both that I was getting them confused. But overall, you could underdrop it and potentially, oh, actually, all these are low numbers. That's cool. That's actually the coolest part of this deck, I guess. They're all like single digit numbers. And this is deck number seven. That's, I think, the lowest number I've ever opened. Wow, that's exciting. So this one's got a lot of potential in terms of like sealed, just with a lot of self damage. Um, I think this could be interesting with that Alloyan list, but I hope that there would be stronger pairings in the other two. All right, now let's go to our Utera. Save that Necreon for last, hoping that we get like a Foil Haunty or a River of Souls. I think that would be a cool way to end this. Actually, these might all be very low number lists. This one starts with a five. Finding War Tusk, Combat Ether Hound, Combat Raptor, Deep Branch Prowler, Dendrify, Lysian Shard, Might of the Trees, Shard Plate Behemoth, Stegon Alpha, Uprising Wildmen, and an Oros. Dark Spores, Deep Wood Assault, and Bark Skin. Um, unfortunately, this is another deck that feels almost exactly the same as like half the ones I've opened. So I feel like a lot of my lists have had the um, Stegadon Alpha, Shard Plate Behemoth, Might of the Trees, Lysian Shard, and Dendrify's been a couple in this one. But overall, um, there's a lot of kind of vanilla creatures. Um, Might of the Trees is an interesting card because you can play stuff for free. The Binding is not as exciting for me just because, again... I don't like stuff to have to depend on the end of the cycle. Um, there's not a lot of board presence here to really get a lot out of that combat Ether Hound for the replacement. Um, but we do have Dentrify, which could be strong just to make Oak Fathers. Might of the Tree can make Oak Fathers. And we have the one Exalt for the Wildman, which again, I feel like is a little bit of a, a non-bow because it's already got breakthrough um, if you put the Exalt in lane. Um, but if you put the Elysian Shard in that same lane, you pump it up, give it an additional attack. Like you could potentially push a lot of damage with it. So it's not a horrible card to have, but overall this deck is a little bit more vanilla and we've seen a lot of Shard Blade Behemoths, which I don't think that card is as good in this set because a lot of stuff is dependent on increasing attack just from what I've seen. Um, so it's a big body. You could get one really good block or one really good attack, um, but then after that it kind of evens itself out and it's just a body that... Is just waiting to be kind of killed at lower power or lower defense. So now we've got our last foil deck out of our Kickstarter foil collector edition display. Um, so I'm really excited. And actually, I guess we see that we have a Blighted Cersei here. So that's a really good way to end this. Um, so we've got a Brood Meba, Cackle Bones, Dark Shaper Savant, Explosive Demise, Graveborn Caller, Horrific Geist, Malicious Death Seeker, Sacrifice Chamber, Stalking Demon, Vile Terror, with, if you guessed it, a Cersei. We've got Bones of Solace, Sorrow, and Soul Swap. So the Bones of Solace, like I showed before, if you have four creatures die in this lane, it transforms, or destroys. And then transforms, deal six damage to the opponent, gain six life. Pestilences give all enemy creatures minus three, minus three. And then Soul Reaver is that switch that health of a creature and a player. So that could be kind of this, I win by switching your one health relate remaining creature with your 50, 60 life, or maybe a million life if you're playing against that summoning sticker combo. So overall, um, there's a couple ways, I guess, that you could technically um, pump your Cackle Bones, which I think is kind of one of the better ways to like win with this deck is the Cackle Bones, Sacrifice Chamber, Destroy Again, Sacrifice Chamber. Dark Shaper Savant is great with the, all your underdrops, just being able to minus five, minus five, anything that you want, every one drop you play at level five, or sorry, level three. 
Um, explosive demise. You can basically get rid of your um, which card is it? The not the amoeba, the malicious death seeker. Destroy it to give your um, cackle bones plus four, and then destroy everything, or hopefully destroy everything with minus eight, minus eight with that explosive demise. So overall, um, there are a couple nice little self destruction synergies. You do have that vile terror. Um, there's only so there's three spirits. For a second, I only thought it was two. So we got three spirits here. So there's a likely likelihood that you will hopefully have three spirits when you play that Vile Terror. But I think the big draw here would be that Blighted Cersei. So if I were to play this Sealed Pool, I would probably... Let's see. I just got to double check. I think there's too much vanilla in the, the Terra deck. I think I definitely would. Oh yeah, this one had the, the summoning shambler. There's the activate ability off of that wind reverse here to be able to untap your cackle bones for mobility. I think that would be right play. Do um Necrium Tempest um combo here. So let me know what you think. Comment if you think there's a better fuse. But overall, this was a ton of fun to open a lot of foil lists. So now that I've opened four booster displays of the last winter. I think this is a really fun set to open. There's a lot of really, really cool cards. Um, one thing I will say, which I think a few other people have noticed, is that there are a lot of cards that seem to be grouped together. Um, so this one actually, the only like quote unquote card that I keep seeing here is like the Explosive Demise with the Graveborn Caller. But there's definitely like Lysian Shard, I think was in almost every Uterra deck that I've opened. Um, the Stampeding Mongosaur was in almost every Tempest list. So it's like, there's a couple cards that just show up a ton, which granted they're commons, so you'd expect them to show up. But there's definitely like, for example, Dark Shaper Savant's a common. I think I've only opened like two of them. So that's something that obviously the collation here is interesting. Um, but overall, there's a lot of really cool lists. And I think a lot of these that I've opened, I'm probably undervaluing and I start playing them and I'll be like, wow, this deck's insane. Um, but overall, I would say out of the foil lists, I didn't get anything crazy, but I did open some crazy lists out of some of my other packs and other displays. So I think this is an amazing set. I'm very excited to start playing some more constructed games and sealed games with this. I will probably go through some of these videos and find some of my favorite sealed pairings that I talked about and start playing some of those on the client. But I'm also going to be playing a couple constructed pairings that I think might be fun on the client as well. So thank you for tuning in. Um, I will hopefully have another booster display sometime in the next week or two, and I will probably open it. And with the rate at which these videos are coming out, because I record them a little bit quicker than when I post them, um, there is a chance that there might just be a nonstop, like, hey, finish all the, the foil displays. It'll be a while before I open stuff, and then you'll see more videos right off the bat. So thank you for tuning in. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed seeing this stuff open, and you kind of could understand maybe what you might see when you open some of your displays. Um, how many betrayers you might get, some of the cards that you might see a lot of, some of the cards that you might not see a lot of. Now, granted, everyone's boosters are going to be different, but um, I had a ton of fun, and it's nice to see some of these new cards, some that I don't think I've even seen before today's opening or the last few openings. So thank you for tuning in, and I will see you next time with some more content.